Running a wellness retreat is a satisfying and rewarding experience. And there are certain things that you can do to make sure that you really deliver high value to participants. Watch this video to find out how. If you want to run a wellness retreat, then chances are you're someone who wants to create transformation in people's lives. And what that takes then is to address a lot of different aspects of their lives. So in this video, I'm going to share with you certain different areas to focus on as you design your wellness retreat to make sure that it, it's deeply transformational and that it really creates something that lasts in people's lives. The first thing to think about as you create and design your wellness retreat is what kind of outcome do you want people to have? What's the transformational journey that you want to bring them on? Your people, you got to know who they are. You got to know what their pain points and problems are. And once you know that, you can start to look at, all right, here's where they're starting and this is where we're going. So what you want to design is first and foremost, looking at where they're starting out and then really look at where do they need to end up? and coming at this from an outcome-driven perspective. How do you want people to walk away from your retreat? What do you want them to walk away knowing? What do you want them to walk away feeling? What do you want them to walk away doing? Who do you want them to walk away knowing? So these are all really important questions that you wanna start asking right at the beginning as you start designing your wellness retreat. Another thing that's really important is to think about the venue that you're gonna use. Now you can get really creative and mix things up. And one of the biggest mistakes that I see people make as they're designing wellness retreats is to get the most fancy, expensive, luxurious place that they can find. Now the problem with that is that first and foremost, that can end up eating into your profits. And one of the things that I'm all about is helping people monetize their magic and really generate a good living from leading transformational retreats and seminars. If you spend all the money that you would earn on the venue, that's not very sustainable. And unless you're working with a super high-end luxurious audience for whom price is no object, which is kind of rare, you wanna make sure that the retreats are accessible and that the people that you really wanna serve can buy them and can afford them. For that reason, I recommend getting creative with your venues. Instead of finding the five-star Sedona wellness retreat resort place, why not rent an Airbnb or a VRBO or a houseboat as one of my clients has done and create a unique experience that's more focused on the experience than on the luxury accommodations. Another thing to think about is the timing of the event. You know, I've seen retreats all the way from two days to 10 days. And what I found is that in order to have a real true transformation, it can't be too short. And so the minimum amount of time for a true transformational retreat, and actually, in my opinion, the ideal amount of time is three days. Three days gives you enough time to day one, create a new vision, a new possibility. Day two, dig into the nitty gritty difficult stuff and day three to create some sort of plan of action for the future. So that's kind of the minimum and ideal number for an initial retreat, meaning a retreat where you're meeting people for the first time, three days is really great. So one of the most effective things that you can do in a wellness retreat is teach people something new. And I find that that is the easiest way to start with a retreat, is to open up people's minds first. Sometimes opening up their heart or their emotional connection takes a little more time, it's a little bit deeper work, but if you can open up their minds first to some new ideas, new concepts, new frameworks, that's a really great way to set the foundation for your retreat. The second part is to connect emotionally and to go deeply inward. Now, if you think about it in wellness, people have a lot of resistance sometimes to changing the way that they do things. You can start with the conscious mind and change the way people think about something. You can't really change their behavior just from the mind alone. It takes a lot of discipline. So we got to go deeper. We got to get into the emotional things. We got to get into the heart. So having some activities where people go into their past, their belief systems, things that have hurt them or made them angry, stories that they've made up about themselves or about the world, about their worthiness, Right? So getting into their heart is an access point to getting them to change their 
behavior. Another really important part of any wellness retreat is moving the body. So this is a place where you can introduce people to new ways of moving. And this is something people often feel a lot of resistance to in making transformations about health, right? So we're looking for ways to connect to the body that people can enjoy so that they can have a positive association with your experience and with their, their own physiology. Which brings me to the social aspect of a retreat. Any retreat, wellness or otherwise, has to have a social component. This is about people bonding and connecting and supporting and uplifting each other. So creating activities that encourage people to connect is great. And also in a wellness retreat, one thing you can do is create those types of bonding activities around food and cooking and the physiological experiences like hiking or doing activities together, or dancing together. These are all ways to encourage more bonding. And the beauty of creating more bonding at your wellness retreat is that that's often a big factor in people deciding to keep working with you. If you create a wellness retreat that's awesome and people connect and they open their heart and they open their minds and they change their physiology, and then on top of it, you offer the opportunity for them to keep doing that work as a group, I think you'll find that people will sign up. In my experience, and with my clients, there are always people who want to keep going, who want to take the next step, as long as you deliver high value in your wellness retreat.